Hello, boys and girls. Today is the day to check over your informational writing piece. By now, you should have written it and hopefully have copied it over on a nice clean sheet of notebook paper. And so now you get to be the teacher today and you are going to check over your own writing, giving yourself a grade for your work. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we wrote our story about our, our informational piece about the world's most dangerous cat and how it is endangered. That's how I wrote mine. So I'm going to take today, I'm going to take my writing and I'm going to use this little check sheet to go through and to make sure that I have included all of these things. I've even put a little blank at the beginning of each checklist so that if I can, I can check it off to make sure that I have actually done that. So I'm going to go through each of these and you can, um, you can just stop the video and make a copy of this, take a, have your mom take a picture of it, or you can just actually look at it on here, pause the video as I'm going along and then look at your writing and make sure you have all of these things too. Then when you have a check mark beside of every single one of these things, then you can bet that you have a wonderful informational story that you've written. So let's get started. Here's the beginning thing. The first thing you really need to make sure is that you put your name and date at the top. Now, although you're the one grading it, and I know you know your writing, I want you to get in the habit of always putting your name and the date because when we do go back to school, if you aren't in that habit, you'll forget to put your name there and then somebody else might get credit for your wonderful story. So check and make sure you put your name and date at the top. And I would even add to that to get in a good habit of putting it at the top right hand corner would be a good place for you to put that. And then the next thing is I chose a catchy short title that goes with what I wrote about. And remember, we said that a title is a sneak preview of your story. So, and remember, I'm going to also add to make sure that um, each word in the title is capitalized. All right, so there we go. And my third, checklist is I put correct punctuation at the end of each sentence and commas where needed. So go through and make sure that you um, put a period at the end of each sentence unless you start, started your sentences off with a sentence starter that is in the form of a question then you would need to put a question mark there. Then the next one says, I used a capital letter at the beginning of each sentence. So everywhere you put a period, the next word needs to start with a capital letter. So if you realized back up here that there's a sentence you forgot to put a period in and you add it, then you need to make sure that the next word for the next sentence starts with a capital letter. And of course, the capital letter up at the um, in the title. Then the next one says, I used facts and details from the Scholastic News, but I put it in my own words. Remember, we talked about how it's important that you reword things in your own words. We can't really copy what someone else has written about. It is perfectly fine to get some ideas and use some of their words, but turn them around a little bit and put them in, in your own words as if you were just retelling the story. Then the next one says, I started my writing with an opening paragraph, and that's your topic, sentence, that's where you got that from. I ended my writing with a closing paragraph, and on your brainstorm, it just said closing statement, and that's just where you kind of go back and recap everything that you told about, maybe even throw in a little opinion, and then all of my sentences make sense. Now, if you left out a word, in a sentence, it's probably not going to make sense. If you don't understand what you're saying, then whoever's reading your story probably won't be able to understand what you're saying. So just read through them. Make sure it makes sense. Read it out loud. Read it to your mom. Read it to your dad. That's how I do my editing when I write 
things and I go back and read them out loud. They don't make sense. Then I go back and fix it. Add a word, take a word out, change something so that it makes more sense. And the next thing on the checklist says, I spelled previously learned words correctly. So your teachers have probably worked with you. I know I did. Um, I have worked with students on OG skills. So if you know that a word needs to have a magic E at the end, then don't forget to add that magic E. Or if you know letter combinations that make certain sounds or when to use a C and when to use a K, use those skills to make sure that your words are spelled the best that you can. If it's a word you know that you've learned how to spell before, make sure you spelled it correctly. Sometimes we get in a hurry and we misspell words. So go back and fix those. Or you can ask your mom if you're or dad if you're just not 100% sure of how to spell it. And because the spelling needs to be as close to um, accurate throughout the whole story as you can, um, especially if it's a word that you've learned before. We want to be able to apply skills we've learned. That's very important. Then I use my best handwriting. That's important too. You want people to be able to read what you wrote. So make sure you've done your very best handwriting. And in fact, if you want to, you can even ask your mom or dad to help you type it on the computer and using a Microsoft Word document or Google Doc or something so that, um, that you know that the handwriting is legible for you to be able to read. When you are writing it, you want to make sure you put a finger space in between each word. You do not work, want your words crammed in together. Make sure there is a space between. And then I indented at the beginning of each new paragraph. Now, in this type of story, it was very easy to know where to indent because we indented at the beginning of our opening. We indented at the beginning of each fact, which we I call those three topic paragraphs. And you got those from fact one, fact two, fact three, and at the beginning of your closing. And for those of you who haven't indented before, remember all that means is you start at the red line of your notebook paper and you move over five finger spaces only for that first line of each paragraph. So for this type of story that we wrote, with an opening, fact one, fact two, fact three, and a closing, you could have and should have indented five times. And then finally, the last thing is I used a variety of sentence starters. Variety meaning you didn't use the exact same sentence starter every single time. And you threw in some good ways to start your sentences so that each one starts a little bit different. So if you go through, do that checklist. And I will, um, like I said, if you haven't or you're going through it, just take it and pause it. And you can start the video over, go through, check your writing, make your own checklist, put you a check mark if you have all of those things. And when you've checked off that you used all of those, then you know you've got a wonderful story that your teacher would give you a very good grade on. And you can be very proud of what you did.